I'll run out and get one faster. Anybody else need to sign? Are we all good to go? Check back, Brenda, and see if you did it earlier. I don't need to sign that one. Okay. I'm waiting for the attendance. All right. Okay. All right. I did that All right, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We want you to know, brothers, yeah, back that up a little bit. We, have, we want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, of their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints, and this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then to the, by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that, he, as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the, gen by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich." Uh, the reason I wanted to, to share this is, uh, you know, as we heard in uh, the message today, we all have uh, a God-given meaning. We all have been given a God, uh, a godly purpose, and we also have been given a mission. But then we connect that to the epistle reading for today, where Paul talks about Jesus' perfect love. Well, if part of our mission needs to be the carrying out of that act of love. Uh, I want you to, to think about where Paul starts in that section. He starts with the last verse of ver chapter 12 where he says, and now I will I'll show you a more excellent way as he you know, goes into the example of Jesus' love. Well, our love has to express itself and that love needs to ex be expressed itself not in just abstract ways, but in concrete ways. Um, and I'm bringing this up because of what we're going to talk about in our meeting today. Um, both Randy and Lauren have said, you know, Redeemer is blessed. And we know that's the truth. But as God blesses, 
What do we do with those blessings? As God blesses beyond our means, or beyond our needs, I should say, what do we do with those? Do we hold on to them and save them for a rainy day? Or did God give them for a purpose? Did God give them so that what we do in our love might extend further? I'm just going to leave that as a question and let you come to the conclusion. Because I think we all know when God gives something, he gives it with a purpose. He gives it because he has a reason for giving it. He gave us the greatest gift of all in his love. And I'm going to read that verse again in verse 9 of chapter 8. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he, become, he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. We have all been, been given the richness of grace through Jesus Christ. Through his suffering, his death, his resurrection, we have been blessed with the richness of salvation, the richness of forgiveness of sins, the richness of everlasting life, the ri richness of his word and his sacraments, the richness that he continues to bestow on us week after week, year after year, decade after decade. And so when we see how God gives and how he's provided with the perfect love, how do we exercise that love? Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we ask, fill us with your spirit. Help us to dwell on how we carry out our meaning, our purpose, and our mission in your love. Help us to see the perfect love that we have received and the abundance of it. And as we have responded to that perfect love, help us to see how we are to direct it. Strengthen us by your spirit. Give us insight and vision that we might do so in, according to your glory and in the direction you would have us go. In your name, amen. And it's on? Okay, good. Oh, thanks for staying after uh, service and uh, attending the congregational update. Um, I think we are in a real good place, and we are going to we are going to see that uh, Redeemer continues to be blessed. God blesses is blessing this congregation right now, and well, always has. But he's his blessings are abundant, and uh, uh, we need to address how we're going to handle some of that, and that's going to be towards the end of the meeting. So uh, let's go ahead. Ben, I gave you a uh, meeting today slide. That one, that one was titled the Packers not in the NFC Championship meeting, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was the right one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, because there's like 50 more slides to this one. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm still a little bitter, but... Uh, we'll okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we start out with uh, the ways that uh, Redeemer is feeding its congregation and just kind of summarize some things. Pastor uh, mentioned some of these in uh, his after-service uh, announcements today, but uh, for, for being fed, for feeding the congregation, obviously we have the Sunday morning worship with Holy Communion. Um, that's, uh, you can attend that in person. Uh, you can view it live streaming on Facebook. Uh, you can also go out to our website and view uh, past services. Uh, usually we have children's messages with uh, our DCE, Alex Wright. Uh, Wednesday evenings we also have worship with Holy Communion at 6.30. Pastor does a daily devotional that is uh, streamed on Facebook uh, th Monday through Thursdays at 12 noon. If anybody uh, was not aware, you can... Tune in on Facebook and, uh, and follow Pastor in his daily devotion. We have our group Bible studies, usually Sunday mornings with Pastor. This he covered uh, in his announcement, usually Sunday mornings with after service with Pastor. <coughs> Tuesday morning, Charles Nearing has and leads a Bible study. And Thursday mornings, Kathy Altergott also has a Bible study. So uh, some pretty good options there if you want to dive further into the Word of God with your fellow brothers and sisters here at Redeemer. 
Um, we also have uh, available to us Right Now Media, which is a mobile app where you can uh, sign in and um, there's Bible studies and there's children's shows and there's instructionals and all kinds of good content out there uh, for the Christian viewer. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. Um, and as I mentioned before, with our, our Redeemer Lutheran GB website, uh, we have on-demand viewing of all media content, and it's available online uh, for you to view anytime. As a matter of fact, you'll probably want to get home, and I don't know how, fa how fast is this meeting going to get out there, John? As quickly as I can push buttons. As quickly as he can push buttons, so you might want to go home, and you don't have the Packers to watch this afternoon, so maybe you want to watch this meeting again. Um, <laughs> Or maybe not. I don't know. Next slide, please. Good morning. Yes. What thing that's missing on there is the Sunday school. Sunday school. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I missed that. We also have Sunday school uh, available. Uh, starts somewhere in the latter third of the service. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, and you're right, because uh, every week pastor makes the announcement that those who are in Sunday school can leave. Thank you very much. Next slide, Ben. Um, we're going to... Let me see, was there a, an agenda before that? There we go. Okay. So our agenda for this meeting is we're going to go through some project updates that are uh, going on here at Redeemer. We're going to talk a little bit about right now media and its availability to us. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some things going on with the Memorial Committee. We're going to get a financial update, and then we've got some uh, new congregational business regarding uh, upcoming budgets where we want to go uh, moving forward. And then we're going to talk about possibly a change to the budget for the current fiscal year. Uh, and we're going to discuss that and, and see what everybody thinks about that. And after that, we are going to open it up for member input. Uh, any thoughts or, or uh, concerns or anything that anybody has that they want to uh, bring out, we can do at that time. So, okay, Ben, next slide, please. Okay, uh, for the Redeemer property happenings, what's going on with the Board of Property, uh, store, as far as the storage shed and stage renovation, they're working on getting the stage area finished over the course of this winter, and they're cleaning out the uh, shed and getting an area prepared to pour a new slab in the spring. Um, LED chandeliers for church, that's done. Uh, in case anybody hadn't heard or hadn't noticed, uh, all the lights have been replaced, the lighting fixtures, the originals certainly were, they were wonderful, I really liked them, but uh, time was, and age was showing on them, and uh, um, it was time to switch out, uh, by the way, for the uh, Board of Property uh, who made this choice and replaced them. Uh, very tasteful, I think, in my opinion. Thank you very much for a job well done getting them installed. They are uh, efficient LED, um, so we've upgraded that way, and we've also uh, changed out all the floodlights to LEDs, so we are burning more, more efficiently. Um, for the Narthex uh, renovation, we've had a couple of days here in January where they uh, uh, did some, worked on some plastering. Uh, I imagine that should be, we should be seeing uh, the physical results here rather soon, right, Ben? Hopefully next month. Next month. Uh, okay. Wonderful. So we were on, on schedule for that, that uh, the old brick wall out there that separated the old church office and pastor's uh, uh, office will be kind of coming down and opening up that section for uh, for our community to uh, to commune, uh, to socialize. There we go. Tripping on words. English is my second language. Um, automatic flushers have been installed in the men's room. And uh, they are in there and working and that should uh, uh, well it, it was an update that needed to be made uh, so thank you again Board of Property for getting that done next slide um, 
We are in the process of getting estimates to replace the uh, restroom windows in the school building. Those windows are the originals that were uh, in the school when it was built and age and everything else is, is showing on those and they, uh, they are becoming inefficient and ineffective. Uh, so those need to be replaced. Uh, we're planning to this summer uh, reseal and restri restrike the church parking lot. It's an asphalt parking lot uh, and that's just part of maintenance you have to do on asphalt every several years. And I think it's been, I think this will be year three since the last time it was sealed and striped. I believe that's, those are the figures that I heard. And then we are also in the process of getting quotes to put a family slash handicap accessible uh, restroom in the school building in preparation for remodeling the school restrooms to bring that all up to date. So um, any questions on any of that? Okay, next slide, please. Um, moving on to Right Now Media. Uh, like I mentioned before, Right Now Media is a mobile app that allows the members of Redeemer, uh, well, not just the members of Redeemer, but they allow access uh, to their site and they have all kinds of streaming content from instructionals to Bible studies to, uh, to shows to uh, kids' cartoons, all that good stuff. And we offer it uh, as a benefit to members of Redeemer Congregation. Uh, you can go in, you can sign up for free. Is it free or is it included? Oh, anyway, uh, you can sign up at no cost to yourselves. Uh, the church sponsors it. Uh, we just recently uh, renewed our one-year membership. They offer pay for 11 get uh, the 12th month uh, free. So we just recently, and that was just in January, uh, renewed our one year subscription with Right Now Media. So for the next 12 months, it is still out there. It is still free of charge to you. You just have to go, you can go through our website, uh, follow the links to Right Now Media. You can sign up for an account and you can get access to that. Um, if you have any questions, Hey, Jeff, is it okay if I give out your name as a contact? <coughs> yes. Yes, Jeff. All of Redeemer's archived content is on uh, Right Now Media. That's the landing page. So if you want to catch up on daily devotionals with Pastor Pat, they're all out there. Uh, worship services, special services, memorial services, it's all out on Right Now Media. And again, it's free. There's a lot of great content out there. So um, when, well, you'll get into the usage stats and that. It seems like there's, we have a, a solid group that use it a lot. You know, the 20-80 rule where 20% uh, use 80% of the, or, you know, are, are using it 80 You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's really a, a very valuable resource for us. It's free to all members. Go to our website. It's on our website's homepage. Just scroll on down. Or go to links, Right Now Media, and you can sign up right there. But it's a great way to access, if you're, if you're not a Facebook person or a YouTube person, it's a great way to access our uh, archive <coughs> content. Thanks, Jeff. So currently, uh, with our Right Now Media accounts. We have 65 members that are signed up. The average uh, age of the su subscriber is 59. Look at my generation being all tech savvy. Uh, the average session, <coughs> the average session is uh, 10 plus minutes. 51% uh, of our logons are for studies while 42.9 are kids shows and 6.1% uh, for training. Um, and the last uh, points again, uh, like I mentioned, Right Now Media offers us, our congregation, uh, pay for 11 months, get the 12th month free. We just took advantage of that here in January, so for the next year, uh, for the next year, this service will be available to the members of our congregation for free. Next slide, Matt, please. Um, 
com updates from the Memorial, uh, Memorial Committee. Memorial Committee has uh, been in existence for two years now. And uh, they're comprised of Ann Anderson, Sharon Spralo, Ross Corey, and Randy Fisker. Their goal is to both honor the wishes of the generous families uh, and, and who make their gifts and addressing the ministry needs of Redeemer. Over the past two years, some projects completed from the families of uh, John and Carol Hoffman. Got a radio transmitter in the parking lot. I want to comment on that. Um, during, during COVID, we, um, when we did Ruby's Pantry, we were having a, an issue because we used to be able to start with a devotion and have everybody gather, but during COVID, we didn't uh, do that or weren't able to do that. Um, and I wish I had thought of this sooner, but um, I thought, well, I'm doing this daily devotion. We've got to make some more use out of that. And so I, I talked to both uh, um, Jeff and to Ben and so now, during Ruby's Pantry, we broadcast my, the audio of my daily devotions in the parking lot for those waiting to go through Ruby's Pantry. So now we're making you know, more regular use out of that, and they can get more devotions, and I can hit more of those who are coming to Ruby's Pantry than I was before. So it actually is a blessing. I mean, we did that at the beginning of the pandemic, and then that radio transmitter just kind of sat there, and I thought, what a great way to use it. So just so that you're aware, that's how it's being used. Thank you, Pastor. Um, David Stralo and Mich Marcella Antonov, uh, backlighted cross on the front of the church. Marcella Antonov, the Paschal candle and entry cross by the pulpit. Laverne Burke and Vern Siegman, there's a water cooler in Pastor's new office. Bill Branch uh, made possible patriotic flag banners. Donna Branch uh, made possible table covers for special events. Next slide, Ben. And we have received other memorial funds um, that came in uh, for families, and they are for designated areas. Uh, from Wayne April, designated to the media ministry. Doris Van Miller, designated to music. And Laverne Burke uh, had a memorial designated to the Handbill Choir. Uh, lastly, we received memorial monies in memory of members, and we are finalizing uh, some projects to be funded. These include front and side wall banners, communion trays, new furnishings, and wall decor for the upcoming Narthex renovation, or the one that's underway. And uh, they will the Memorial Committee will continue to communicate to the families and update Rebe Redeemer members when the funds are used. Families involved are Carl Hazard, Judy Westerveld, Jean Buzero, and Ed Groh. Next slide, please, Ben. So if anybody, if anybody here, uh, the Memorial Committee is making an appeal, if anybody has ideas uh, that can be that memorial funds can be used for uh, for the benefits of this congregation uh, please speak to one of the members and let them know your idea um, or ideas the members again are randy fister ann anderson sharon stralo and ross corey submit your ideas to them yeah, that would be a big help thank you very much um, yep next slide moving into financials the financials folks are looking very strong. Um, what I have here is a graph, a chart of uh, our offerings for the last handful of years, uh, starting back in fiscal 2017, 2018, and running through uh, the current year budgeted. Um, we had, you know, three, Three hundred and thirty-ish thousand dollars for 17, 18, 18, 19. And then in 1920, we took a jump up to 359,000. And in 2021, 2020, 2021, um, that increased up to 376,000, almost 377,000 uh, dollars. Very indicative of uh, faithful and. Uh, good steward conversation 
you know, in, in the times that we're going, as you look at the world around and you kind of, and, and what's going on, not only in the world, but our country, and kind of how things are going for people to uh, remain faithful and to give their gifts to God uh, in the face of everything that's going ar on around us is uh, commendable, in, in my opinion. I think our congregation does a very good job of giving back to God uh, the gifts that he has given them. So that's just, that's my perception. Want to share that with you. Uh, hope everybody agrees with that. Um, but we did, when we uh, put together the current fiscal year budget, we did step that back. Uh, we did not uh, decide to trend off of 2021. Um, we stepped that back as our best guess, uh, back to 358,000. We are happy to be low on that one. We, we won't mind coming back if, uh, if we're way above our estimate and say, we were wrong, you folks did a great job. We're happy to be low. We just didn't want to um, err on the high side and end up with ugly red numbers. So this is a, a kind of a chart graph of how things are going um, from August through last December. Our actual in the, in the left-hand column versus what we budgeted in the middle column. And you can see at, uh, for the end of January, or I'm sorry, for the end of December 2021, what we thought or what we predicted in our budget was we'd have about $140,800 in offerings, and really what we've experienced is 158,000, uh, so plus 18. Um, other income we thought would be about $3,000, and we've experienced uh, 13,700 um, from thriving matching. Uh, well, that one's down just a, a tick yet, but uh, we're not off that bad there. And then uh, miscellaneous. I'm not exactly sure what miscellaneous means, especially versus other, but um, that's down a bit. But when you get to the total income again, where we thought we would have about 146,000, we're at 177,000. So uh, exceeding income uh, quite nicely. As far as the expenses go, um, we are running slightly above expenses. We've made a couple of uh, uh, small gifts, shall we say. Um, I don't know if, uh, if everyone has heard. Uh, we haven't spent a, a whole lot of time, I don't think, covering it, but like uh, uh, Freedom House, uh, which is a organization on the east side of town that takes care of uh, folks who find themselves in a homeless situation. Um, they are a faith-based organization, and they take people in, offer them uh, housing, offer them uh, you know, food, shelter, and then training. They go over finances with them and uh, help them work out a budget and help them get back on their feet uh, so that they can go back uh, to a life where they are self-sufficient and, uh, and, and back on their feet and, and have no need for a, being in a homeless shelter again. So they. Uh, work with these people and, tr and try and set them on a path that improves their lives. And being faith-based, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the government, whether it was state or federal, decided to pull about $50,000 worth of funding for them uh, this year. So they sent out an appeal, and we answered that uh, uh, as quickly as we could as a congregation. The executive committee decided to donate $2,500 to them uh, to help them out. And um, so there's, there's been things like that. There's been a couple other uh, uh, instances where costs have been a little higher than we thought they might have been. Uh, so th the total expenses is running, let's call it about $8,000 uh, higher than we thought it was going to be. However, when we take a look at where we are, net income, uh, we thought we were gonna be about 16,000 in the red by this point. Um, 
with most of our, our bigger holidays, bigger uh, giving opportunities coming up in the second half of the fiscal year, but we thought we were gonna be about $16,000 in the red. Where we really are is closer to $7,000 in the black, which is good because we like black numbers. Now, one, of, one of the things that happened, the board of property, I, I did put it on the report, but um, we had uh, a water leak. Um, the, the pipe that gives water to both buildings between uh, the street uh, at Hudson Street and the school building was leaking water into the crawl space in the school. And we found out that um, it wasn't going through the meter, but it was putting water in a place where it didn't belong. Um, and it cost us almost $10,000 to replace that water line. Um, it was our responsibility, it wasn't the city's responsibility. So um, needed to be done, that's how much it cost. So that was one of the things that happened. Thank you, Pastor. My mind doesn't always hold on to all these details, so sometimes, and I apologize, sometimes when I talk about things, I use kind of generic terms, and I know that uh, uh, sometimes I don't have all the information that some would like. I apologize for that, uh, but thank you for that detail, Pastor. So, account balances. Um, here we go. Uh, our, our checking account balance uh, at this point, as of December 31st, I should say, uh, sits at about $83,000. Um, the Nicolay Senior Youth Checking, uh, $6,700, and Nicolay Savings at $164,000. Now, the, the Senior Youth check, Checking, that's the Senior Youth's money, um, but it is just to make people aware that it's there uh, the, for the Senior Youth, but it is an account that exists. Uh, Nicolay Savings, 164000 a lot of that is uh, de designated money, so it's got things that it is funding and things that it is supporting. Um, our Lutheran Legacy Endowment for Building Improvements sits at $159,000, and uh, the LLE Education Endowment uh, sits at $36,400. Uh, so for a total of almost $450,000. Like I said, a, a lot of that uh, funds the different budgets through, uh, through church. A lot of it is designated and are, is already earmarked, but much of that money, and I believe especially checking, is pretty much liquid, right? Yes. Uh, so the big number up there probably is checking, sitting at $83,000. Next slide, then. Kathy. What is the education portion used for? Education would be largely for scholarships, I believe. Yeah, um, whatever the market increase is. Whatever the market increase is, we, we use that to uh, give scholarships to uh, those who are going on to um, you know, college, uh, technical schools, um, right now, correct me if I'm wrong, do we have about 10, eight? Eight. Eight students who are taking advantage and uh, receiving scholarships. So. Thank you. So, like I said, uh, Redeemer is in a strong financial uh, position. And kind of into uh, what Pastor let uh, open this meeting up with is as we accumulate money, you know, what, what do we do with it? Um, as I, as I kind of contemplated this, because we've been talking about this at uh, uh, our executive me meetings for a while, and I go off and think about it. I kind of think of uh, the parable of the master and the three servants, where uh, the master was going away for a while, and he gave one of his servants ten talents, and he gave another one five, he gave another one two. And uh, while he was gone, his servants were supposed to use that money wisely, and 
when he came back, he was going to see what went on. So the day comes when, when the master comes back, and the first servant that he gave ten talents to says, Master, I took your ten talents, and I invested it, and made ten talents more, so here you go, here's your, your ten plus ten, I doubled your money for you. Very well, good and faithful servant, well done. Goes to the next servant, and I'm paraphrasing this, obviously. Second servant he gave five talents to. Comes to him and says, I invested your, I used your money, I invested it, and made five talents more, so here's your five plus another five, I doubled it. Well done, good and faithful servant. Third servant that he gave uh, two talents to said, well, <coughs> master, you didn't give me much money. I, you didn't give me a whole bunch to work with here, and uh, I, I knew that, uh, you know, you'd be mad if I lost it for you, so I took and I did nothing with it, and, well, but here they are. Here's your two talents back. Well, his master, as you all recall from the parable, was not real pleased with that and uh, sent that servant away to punishment and then took his two and gave it to the guy with, uh, with 20. Um, I guess I don't want to be that third servant where God is opening up the, uh, the treasure gates of heaven. We... Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we made a move in our budget where we added 10% of our prior year's offerings that we give to missions. So we, in, in a sense, started tithing uh, against our offerings. And in the past couple of years, and I know we went through it quickly, but in the past couple of years, as you've seen what happened to our income um, on the graph, and, and it's been increasing, um, and it co coincides with that move to me it's more than a coincidence because God does say bring unto me the full tithe and challenge me on this bring me the full tithe and see that I won't throw open the treasure gates of heaven and pour out unto you such blessings that you will not be able to receive it all one place in scripture where God challenges us to challenge him. So, in recognition of what's going on here uh, and, and what has been happening with our financial situation here at Redeemer, <coughs> excuse me, um, we want to get into uh, some new congregational business. And the first one is what we would like to do, and, and this is this is what the executive committee is thinking now, but this is something that the voters need to decide. So Ben, if you could for the next uh, slide. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the motion for new line item in our future budgets, starting with the next fiscal year. And again, a lot of this, I just kind of went over. Uh, our finances are in good, strong place. Our weekly offerings remain strong. And that is a great testimony to our members considering everything that's going on, at least in my opinion and the way I view the world and what's going on around. I think that uh, everybody being willing and stepping up and returning unto God uh, portions of his blessings, I think that is commendable. Um, our monthly expenses are covered and we have mon money available in our accounts to cover the cost of our building improvements and other various projects. And we are accumulating money, and that's not a bad thing. That is a good thing. But God does not call us to sit on his blessings and keep them all for ourselves, and he certainly does not want us to spend them excessively or frivolously on ourselves. I mean, he wants us to meet our needs, uh, but that doesn't mean that the sh new chandeliers should have been made of gold. You know, uh, it doesn't mean that we should have diamond-encrusted uh, decorations wants us to meet our needs, but we are supposed to help with the excess. We're supposed to help uh, uh, do his work and expand his kingdom. Next slide, Ben. So in fiscal year 2019-2020, uh, Redeemer had a net income of 
$35,456. That's net. And in 2020-2021, we had a net income of $31,584. So in response to that generosity, and again, like I said, the trend seems to be that we are having a very strong giving year, and that is great, and I definitely want to encourage that to continue. But in response to this generosity that we see God showing us, the executive committee would like to establish an outreach program, and we are asking the voters for permission to add a new line item to our budget going forward for outreach. Okay, this item would be budgeted at a percentage of the prior fiscal year's offering, and our executive committee is proposing 3% to start. This new item would be in addition to the 10% that we already give to missions. Okay, so that 10% is going to stay there, but we're looking to add a new line item, and we're recommending 3%. And what we're going to do with that money to start out with is the executive committee will choose several local worthy charitable organizations and distribute that money to them in a lump sum at the beginning of each fiscal year. And this will allow us to examine some local charities and to pay attention to what they're doing, make sure that their goals and their methods are in line with our beliefs. To choose them once a year at the beginning of the year and make one contribution will allow us to, on a yearly basis, change up that recipients. So it's not just locked into one, and it also puts us in a position where we're not making a monthly contribution and causing somebody to depend on that as income. It's like, here's a gift for the year. That's all great, but just don't get to the point where you're including that like a monthly contribution as part of your budget. Just accept the gift and put it towards what you need. That was kind of our thinking. Next slide, Len. Examples of possible organizations, and I only listed a few. There are so many, so many out there. But we have Golden House in Green Bay that provides help and healing for victims of domestic abuse. We have the Freedom House Ministries that we talked about earlier that help out the homeless. An emergency shelter for food, basic hygiene, and support and programming to help them get back out, people get back out and on their own. We have House of Hope. Those are the, that's the organization that we, the last couple of years, has done the Giving Tree at Christmas for unwed mothers, young parents and children experiencing homelessness, help them become competent, independent, and successful members of their community. That's part of their mission statement. I pulled that off their website. We have Wise Women Gathering Place, who offers advocacy, healing, and prevention in domestic violence, sexual assault, dating violence, stalking, sex trafficking, and victims of crime. Those are just four of the local charities in consideration who need help, who need support. I know there's many more. Next slide, Ben. So let's take a look at what that would have meant had we done that this current fiscal year. This current fiscal year, I'm sorry, yes. In last fiscal year, our total offering income was $367,299. Going with a recommended percentage of 3%, that would be a total of $11,000. Just over $11,000. So if we chose three organizations to receive funds, then each organization would have received a lump sum donation of $3,673 in August of 2021. If we would have said, you know what, we're going to donate to these three, they each get that much. If we said we want to reach out and help four, we would have gone, they would have each gotten $2,754.75. 
Um, obviously, we can't pick out 11,019 organizations and give them each a buck. But, uh, but to, to pick a handful, um, you know, even at four $2,700, it's still a nice hunk of change. Uh, and, and they can be effective and they can do some good things with that. So that is what we are suggesting um, moving forward. And we are looking for uh, the, the voters' permission to move on that. Ben, if we could have the next slide, please. So, um, Lauren, Lauren, I got a question. Yes, sir. Just a second. So with this, you're proposing that we add a new line item to the budget that the executive committee owns and operates under? Or do we already not have a board called Mission and Ministry that does inreach and outreach already that should be absorbed into this and add a line item to their board? That's a very good point. That is a very good point. Thank you, Dan. Um, that probably should go under Mission and Ministry. Yep. That's a very good point. Thank you. I would assume that there will be a set of criteria for these facilities that we're going to give to. I mean, I don't have a pro I, I think it's a wonderful idea, but will we have a definite outline of the, what they have to meet in order for us to donate there? Thank you. Yes, they are going to have to. Uh, definitely meet criteria that uh, would align with us. Um, not, not political. Yeah, it's, it's not a political thing. Uh, let's remove, po remove politics from any of it. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go out here. I've never been PC. Uh, let's just say that uh, I, feel, I feel safe in announcing that Planned Parenthood will not be receiving a check from Redeemer Lutheran. So you can feel free to dis disagree with me about Planned Parenthood. I don't care. Will, will these people have to, um, would we put out something if they could register for these endowments and they could give us some background why they would need them or anything like that? Like you submit, other places have to submit something for some monies just a thought. Now, this morning um, on television, I saw where um, West Hutt has a program where, because there's so many homeless kids in schools nowadays, that they were raising money for the, uh, to try to find them a place to live for clothing, school items, whatever. Would that be something that could be included in that or, you know, and I agree with Kathy, I think we need to have some application or whatever, why this would be needed. But again, when I saw that this morning, and I do remember that even when Jennifer was in school, which was many, many years ago, she had two classmates who had no homes. And so I'm sure that has grown immensely. So no, these are all good questions, they're all valid, uh, valid concerns, and yes, we will have to uh, uh, go ahead and uh, do more evaluations. Um, I don't know that we necessarily, and, and again, this is a, something that we want to evolve. Um, so there's thought and consideration that has to get put into this. I'm just not sure if we want to turn this into something where uh, where we are taking applications and having people flock to us, I don't know. Uh, I'm just thinking of the workload and the overhead that that becomes in doing that evaluation. I think it's uh, uh, kind of one of those things where uh, obviously suggestions can be made if there's uh, uh, an organization that you feel would benefit or should be supported, you can certainly bring that to uh, 
the executive committee or the uh, memorial, not memorial, the, uh, the mission and ministry uh, committee and make that recommendation. But I think then as a group, uh, we'll go back and we'll go through and pick, you know, uh, three, four, five organizations from the list and say, yes, we, we've done our due diligence. We know that their values align with our values and uh, we will uh, pick them and write them that, that check. But yes, there is, there is more thought. Uh, like I said, the four that I put up there, those were just ones that uh, came up off the top of our heads in, uh, in our meetings, but there is more consideration that needs to be done. I know there's many more than, than just those. Did you want a motion made so we can keep going with this part? I'll make a motion that we add the outreach, or what do you call it, outreach line item to the budget and that it's under the direction of the mission, Board of Mission and Ministry or with their help with it for this year and, and coming years beyond this year. It's a little out of order, but you know what? It was a good discussion anyway. We get there eventually. Yeah, we'll get there. Anybody? Would we be able to um, drop it if um, we determine that by the time we go over here, that um, giving the amount of money to these charities, whatever? <laughs> If we run into hard times here at our church, would we be able to drop giving that money to these organizations? Thanks, Wes. Yes, yes we would. That is, uh, that's why uh, we are basing this off of the uh, contributions or the, the offerings from the prior fiscal year. And, you know, part of the, um, the whole thing that God says about giving is I believe he also warns people uh, to not be a foolish giver. Don't give so that you lose your own bed and house. Uh, again, I'm paraphrasing. I don't quote uh, scripture real well, but I, I do understand the uh, the ideas that they convey and, and I tend to put them in my own words because I'm a little more comfortable with that but I'm, I'm hope and hopeful that God is guiding my tongue and I don't get too far away from his uh, his meanings but uh, yes I do believe that, that is part of scripture as well is it not I'll ask the authority here more or less yeah don't don't be a foolish giver so yeah if if we do go back to hard times that is uh you know, one of the areas that we would definitely cut back uh, if we had to. Um, the way that uh, this proposal is uh, determined, uh, that's sort of like a built-in protection because it's 3% of the income. So if we have no income, obviously there won't be any gifts. Well, it, it's actually 3% of offerings. Yeah, so, uh, but if we, if we do have a serious decline in offerings from the prior uh, year when we were putting together the budget, you know, that's one of the items that would definitely be decreased or, or if it had to be eliminated, it would have to be eliminated. Um, you know, the, the one thing that uh, does alarm a person when they start talking about hey, we're doing great, hey, uh, the money's rolling in, we're starting to accumulate it, 
you're hoping that the people who hear that message uh, think, good, good, but that's not going to keep me from giving what I'm giving or increasing what I'm giving or, or whatever I'm doing. I, I'm not going to sit there and say, hey, you know something? If I, uh, if I pull a little back from the plate, you know, they're not going to notice it so much because they're doing good. Um, but, of course, uh, we can go through the same scripture and find out what God has to say about robbing him. That was, uh, that was the whole premise of the uh, bring to me the full tithe and see that I won't open up the treasure house of heaven and pour out unto you such a, a blessing that you won't be able to receive it all. The, the, the whole beginning of that was the fact that uh, Israel was not being good stewards and not faithful servants to God, and he's admonishing them for, do you really think you can steal from me? Um, hard to steal. Yeah, he's, he's just not going to let you go uh, get away with it. He op- as you are faithful, as you return to him what he asks you to return, he opens up his uh, treasure stores in heaven and pours out blessings accordingly. Uh, so, yeah, hope. Hopefully nobody's taken uh, from this message about we're, we're doing good and we want to do this extra stuff to say, oh, well, they don't need so much of our, my money then so I can pull back a little. I got this one stick off my side of the church. I also think that with this motion and with the Michigan and ministry budget, it should be published of where we're giving these tidings to. Uh, you know, what we budgeted for each outreach program, you know, walk-ins that need help, etc. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the list of uh, organizations that receive uh, these funds and the amounts they receive would definitely be pub- published. Uh, the congregation needs to know that. Absolutely. Good time. I, I want to address that as well as um, one of the things that we did in addition uh, to the 2500 to Freedom House was to our, yeah, Freedom House was um, to add a regular portion from the congregational offerings into the Benevolent Fund, which we weren't doing. Uh, Benevolent Fund was basically funded by Ruby's Pantry. And so basically we were getting whatever Ruby's Pantry would bring us, and that was Benevolent Fund. For those of you who don't know what Benevolent Fund is, when we get people coming to request uh, a tank of gas, coming to request help with groceries, coming to request a night in a motel room, a bus ticket, you know, we've got the money to do that. Ruby's Pantry was funding that, but now the congregation is, is putting money into that as well so that we've got money to be able to do that. And if you want to know who administers those, you're looking at them. So anyone who's come to look at this, basically I'm taking care of it. Lauren, just for some clarification, this would be a budget, uh, a budget item this year and the payout, the first payout then would be at the beginning of the next fiscal year, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And also, um, I think it's important that when we choose these organizations that they're local. I know there's some ambiguity there as far as, you know, there's not really a guidance there, but I know my friend Thomas is a great supporter of St. Jude's Children's Hospital and four or $5,000 doesn't mean a whole lot to that nationally, but four or 5,000 locally could mean whether an organization is able to keep its doors open. So just keep that in mind too. As we're talking about um, raising the budget and all of that, I just couldn't help but think, but the Lutheran Women's Missionary League has raised their budget every single year since time began. And there were times when that budget, when they jumped quite a bit. And there was a lot of discussion, but we did it. And our only income is from those little mites in those little boxes, and that's it. We have never, God's been with us good, ever not met the budget. Never. 
So we can do it. Thank you, Kathy. So, so you call, you want to end discussion. Okay, uh, is, every, is everybody okay with ending the discussion and having a vote? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and Ben, we are uh, live streaming and we are filming this, right? Recording it? Yes, sir. Okay, great, because I'm going to be able to get everybody on camera. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> um, so by a show of hands then, all in favor of adding this line item uh, at 3% to the budget moving forward. Uh, raise your hands, aye. Okay, and opposed, nay. All right, the motion is carried. Thank you. One other piece of uh, business that we want to next, uh, Next item, Ben. We're going to get pushy on this just a little bit. The next thing we're asking for is the is permission to amend the current fiscal year budget by adding this in for this current fiscal year. And what we would do, we wouldn't take the full 3%. Uh, simple math uh, has it at 1.5%. Um, based on the 3% annual, we are six months now <coughs> into the current fiscal year. So we are asking for the remaining six months. Okay, so uh, we, we, we approved 3%. So what we're looking at is the 367,299, which was last year's offerings, times 3% gives you that $11,019, uh, which works out to if you divide it by 12 months, $918.25 a month. For the remaining six months, uh, we would we have multiplied the 918 and a quarter by six months, uh, which would give us an amount of $5,509.50. We would like permission, we are asking for permission to make that change to the current year's budget. And pick out some organizations and make that distribution uh, as soon, I guess, as soon as possible. Because we have uh, our fiscal year runs August through July. So this is August through January. That's the first six months. February through July be the next six months. So <laughs> that's true. It is. but. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we are looking for to make that uh, change to the current fiscal year, asking the voters for their permission. So uh, is there anybody who would make that motion? I so move. Kathy has made the motion. Do I have a second on that? Second. second. Okay. Uh, now we can open this up for any discussion. Um, I just, what I'm thinking of is, the LWML, we distributed quilts to a couple of these places recently. Uh, we should, maybe anybody, any group or whatever that's donating stuff to any one of these places, before you got, before the executive committee goes ahead and chooses a place, I guess to try and spread it out a little more. Because we delivered quilts, Kathy delivered quilts to a couple places, we did to a couple places. And, you know, we want, and any other groups, I don't know who all does that kind of thing, but maybe so, you know, we delivered quilts to this one, so let's give money, you know, let's do money with this group or that group or whatever, so that way one group's not getting more than others in a sense. Is that possible? I mean, or am I just talking foolish? Or no, you're not talking foolish, not at all. Uh, no, I think there needs to be uh, obviously some coordination just to make sure that, like you said, uh, we don't want to have one or two groups be the entire benefactor of, of our efforts. We do want to spread this around. That is a very valid concern. It's a very valid suggestion. And yes, there does need to be some coordination.
just some clarification on, on a point. I, I believe the original or the, the uh, motion that was just passed said that the Board of Mission and Ministry would be administering this. And this one is saying the Executive Committee would be. It's just, just some clarification. Thank you. Yes, uh, point of clarification. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, but yes, this would also be administered by uh, Board of Mission and Ministry. When I put together these slides, I was thinking executive committee, but honestly, it does fall under Board of Mission and Ministry. So, but yes, thank you, Jeff. Clarification, this would be administered by Board of Mission and Ministry. Some of the things that we give to certain organizations are to benefit the people directly that are there. For instance, quilts are probably going to go home with someone. Okay, um, when we do the the giving tree, those go to those people, those uh, uh, young ladies with their children. Those go. It doesn't really help the organization itself to be able to continue to provide. So what we're doing here is we're wanting to help the organization itself to be able to continue to provide over and above what may benefit those who are already benefiting from, you see where I'm going with that? I'm, I'm not trying to say what you're saying is wrong, I'm just trying to say kind of apples and oranges, okay? Thank you, Pastor. Any other discussion on this? Okay, uh, seeing none, I'm going to ask again for a vote uh, by show of hands to um, um, making this change to the current fiscal year with the numbers uh, that I showed uh, prorated for six months uh, to begin providing organizations with help in the, during this fiscal year. All those in favor? Raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? And the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say I personally believe that the decisions made with these last two votes are in keeping with what God has commanded us to do with his gifts. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Open floor for member input. With um, some of us that are Wednesday nighters <laughs> rather than um, Sundays, so when we come to church um, during Lent and Advent and that, and you see people on Sunday that you've never seen before, don't know their names, they're new members. Is there any possibility of going back to having a picture posted on our bulletin board of all of the new members with their names? Thank you. That is a good idea. And as I New committee, uh, a new member committee, new a welcome committee for all new members. Um, we're going to the meeting will be in March. We're discussing final details in our February meeting, but we are on the same page. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, I have a question on two points that you were talking about on the budget. One was uh, the $10,000 that was spent for water. Now, there's different, uh, through insurance, the property insurance, there's different categories, Not commercial. Covered. Wasn't, wasn't covered. On some properties it isn't, that's what I was just saying, some of they are, some of they aren't. Uh, if you've already checked, fine. My suggestion was just to check with the agent. And the other one was large bank balances on your checking. Um, my experience is that there's interest can be accrued depending on how you have it set up with the bank. Okay, thank you, Tom, for that uh, suggestion. And I'm 
don't see. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't really get into exactly how our stuff is, uh, is invested or our finances are organized with uh, the financial institutions. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Then I'm going to think that at this point people are going to be excited about uh, adjourning the meeting. <laughs> so uh, that concludes the Packers not in the NFC title game today uh, meeting. And uh, thank you all for your attendance and thank you for your input and attention. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Pastor, will you lead us with a Heavenly Father, when you created us and you redeemed us, you gave us a mission and purpose. And as you selected us as your own and consecrated us by our baptism, that mission now needs to go into action. And we pray that uh, what we do with our offerings might be part of that gift of love that we offer. We ask that you would uh, guide us and bless us, guide us to do this in a way that is pleasing in your sight for those organizations that uh, do things in that way, but also that we would do it out of love because after all, the greatest of all of those is love. May we do it as best we can in accordance with that love to show your love and bring the message of your love to, of Christ to our world, and especially our community. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming.